Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to an easy way to design a PCB for the Ublox Neo 7M Global Navigation Satellite System Module Part 2. And this is Part 2 of 2, so this is the last part in this series. Before we get started, I'll mention, if you like what you see here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out Forstronics.com. Here's an overview of the tutorial that I provided in Part 1, so I'm not going to go over this in detail, but the idea is this is the Neo 7M from Ublox. They also have the Neo 6 and the Neo 8, which have a lot of similarities. You can use this as a guide for those, but some of the pinouts are different, so make sure you keep that in mind. And this is geared for non-RF microwave experts, this tutorial. And so in part two, we already did our PCB layout, so we're gonna build it up, or at least talk about how we build it up, and then we're gonna test it out, and we're gonna talk about the NEMA data that it spits out. Once again, if you're interested in how to you know, connect us to an Arduino and program it, the Arduino to parse the data, check out my video logging GPS data to an SD card with Arduino. Okay, there's a picture of our board that we designed in Eagle that we're gonna see in real life in just a second. And I'm not gonna go over this, this is just the design overview, what's on this board, and we went over this in part one. Let's look at a video that, that shows our build-up board and some of the pieces, and we'll talk about, we'll review some of the stuff we talked about in part one and talk about why we made certain decisions. Okay, here we are looking at our finished design all put together. So we, we're zoomed in right now on the Ublox Neo 7, of course, here it is. But we're also looking at what we talked about a lot in part one, and that's you know our RF input and as well as the power source for the active antenna. So right here is the connector from the antenna. It's an IPEX or U.FL. So the antenna has the female part and the male part is surface mounted on the board. This is our RF line, which is a pseudo micro strip going into our receiver on the U blocks. And remember, we made this sort of ground pane peninsula to help shield this sensitive RF signal run. Remember that please, it's important. And we have all these vias around here to help that shielding. Here is our 10 ohm, I know it says 100, but that's because it's, it's, it's a high precision resistor. But this is our 10 ohm resistor for biasing our current. Here goes our power path, and we go through our feed through resistor. Remember, the feed through resistor is a special type of resistor for RF applications for filtering. And here we have the signal go straight through it, or I should say that the power signal goes straight through it. And then we have the third connection, which is ground, which is where, you know, if you think of the schematic, which is where that noise is going to ground, but that you have those ground connections on either side of the capacitor. And then we have our inductor. The inductor that I wanted could not be bought in the 1206 size, so I used a 402 size, a much smaller size. But once again, this is a filter too. This is gonna block high frequency and allow low frequency to pass. So we're getting a nice clean DC run into our active antenna to power it without adding to noise, which can bury our low level GPS signal that we're getting from the antenna. I'll mention this is our jumper. Remember, this allows us to select from serial communication to spy communication. I'm gonna show this example later in serial. You know, here's our different outputs, you know, serial RX, serial TX, ground 3.3, our timing pulse, our interrupt input, so on and so forth. Okay, if we pan out a little bit, this is a little blurry, but we can see our power section. So here's our input power jack, 2.1 millimeters, just like on the Arduino Uno. I like to use a lot of caps here. So I have, remember, a microfarad, 100 nanofarad, and a 47 microfarad cap. And that's just to deal with noisy or unpredictable or power supplies that have a bad transient response. Here's our voltage regulator. Then I do some more caps for filtering before I feed that into our, to power our, our chip, our U-Box chip. And I'll talk a little bit about this in a second. We're going to take a closer look at it. So I'm going to hit play and I'm just going to, the camera is going to pan to different parts. We're going to take a look at the antenna. This antenna is an active antenna. You know, if you go to the U-Box documentation, they, rep, they recommend some other antennas. They're great antennas, but this one I got very low cost off of Amazon just for, for less than $2 and it works pretty good. So I'm showing that, the bottom's metal. 
Okay, now I'm gonna show a blank board just so you can kind of see that. So we can see all the pieces we just saw. And one thing I'll mention is here's the footprint for the Neo 7M chip. And I don't like how they do the mounting for it. They basically use these half vias, if you're familiar with vias. And the reason they do that is so you can use almost like a through hole pins, but also surface mount. But you need to be careful when, when, you're, when you're building your board. I build mine by hand, so I'm, I'm guessing if it's mainly hobbyist here, you're building your surface mount boards by hand. I also have a video on that if, if you're new to that, using solder paste and a reflow oven and things like that. But when you put your solder paste on here, you wanna be careful because the half vias don't cover a lot of the pad. So when you put your Neo 7 chip down here, you wanna make sure that solder paste is touching the vias to make sure that when you reflow it, the solder flows onto the vias and you get a good connection. So just something to watch out for. Okay, I think we're gonna look at the back of the board. You know, once again, notice the shielding pattern from the vias and, you know, another ground plane peninsula for our antenna connection, just like on the front, which was totally planned. Next, I'm gonna show some of the parts, some of the, I guess, the more unique parts used here so you can just get an idea of what they look like. But I have them over here. I'm gonna pick them up with tweezers. Bear with me on the, on the focus here. So right now we're looking at that feed through capacitor. And I think we got a pretty good picture of it from the, uh, the board. But once again, here's the two ends. It's a 1206 size component, but here's those ground connections, those, these little metal pads on either side. So there's the feed through capacitor. Here is the Neo 7M, if you've never seen it, chip. It's basically a system on the chip. Notice, it's on its own PCB. So it's a, a little PCB board that's gonna have some components underneath this metal shield. The metal shield's there to protect the receiver from noise. And here's those half vias that I warned you about. Another thing I'll warn you about is because this is bulky, you know, this is a big, you have a PCB board going on another PCB board. That means it takes a while to heat up. So just make sure when you reflow it that you're giving it enough time and heat you know, you don't want to go too high. You don't want to go above the specs or you could damage it, but you want to make sure you're, you're following the right time measurement for your reflow because this part takes a little while to heat up compared to like a resistor or capacitor. So you'll typically see other parts of the board flow first before this part will flow. There's the, the bottom of it. I think I'm going to put it down soon. Okay, and the last thing I have is the IPEX mail connector that goes on the board. So I think that's a good view of it. So it's just simply a, a push and click to get the antenna on there. These do specify limited connections. They say you should only make and break a connection about 30 times. So you don't want to keep putting on and taking off the antenna. You want to kind of leave it on there. And once again, this is a surface mount component. You know, if I show the back, uh, hopefully we can get a good picture here. Okay, these these two metal pads are ground connection. This other one though is the the RF signal coming in that goes to our pseudo micro strip. Okay, and I think that's about it for what I'm going to show. But this is just to give you an idea and some tips on putting things together. I'm going to put that back there. Uh, one thing I do show, I show that I have an authentic U blocks. Uh, authentic U-Blox chip because there's a lot of fake ones out there. So I bought this directly from the manufacturer. Okay, let's look at our board in action. Okay, before we get to the board in action, I just want to show the setup. So here's the board you just saw. I have it plugged into a DC power jack using a wall wart. And then I just have a simple USB to, to serial, you know, FD... Oh, now the name's escaping me. FD... I see, or I forget what it is. Anyway, USB to serial connection. All I need though is ground because I don't need this to power it. So I want them to have the common ground and I just need the receive on this board and the transmit on this board because I don't, I don't send any data to the U-Blocks just to show what it can do. I just need to read data. So that's my setup. Another thing I'm showing on this, this is not a great flow, but one thing that the chip provides, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, they, they say GPS, that's for positioning, it can give you speed, things like that. But GPS also gives you accurate timing. GPS satellites 
share a time clock that's very accurate. So one thing it spits out is timing pulses, which can come in handy if you want to make sure things are happening in your design at an exact time. Now the default for the pulses is one second, one pulse per second. So here you're looking at a screenshot from an oscilloscope where I captured the pulses coming out. Once again, I have a pin on here for that. And then I have my cursors there to measure that. And you can see, not, not surprisingly, that it's, it's exactly one second. Very high accuracy. Okay, let's look at this in action. We're gonna connect to this, to the serial output, and see the data that's getting spit out. Okay, what I'm looking at, what you're looking at is the a web page that talks about NEMA data. NEMA data is the standard format for GPS data, and that's what the Neo 7M uses. So this is what it's gonna spit out. And here's an example string. It has a bunch of these different strings. This one's the GGA string. And this is what it's gonna spit out, and then it sort of decodes what each one means. And this is important if you wanna program it so you can parse through and grab the data you want. So what, what else you're looking at here is a blank Arduino sketch. So I'm gonna use this. Let me plug in my, my serial device. So I'm gonna use this to, as basically a serial monitor to look at our data. And you can see it starts spitting out right away. So we're connected to it. We have power to it. And uh, now we're looking at the different NEMA strings coming out of it. Now one thing I wanna show you is a lot of these strings are blank because they're not getting data yet. Actually, I'll show you this real quick. This one, the GPRMC one, we can see it connected to at least one satellite. Why? Because here is UTC time and UTC date, but we don't have our positioning data yet. So let me turn the scroll back on. And sometimes it can take a minute or so to get a couple satellites or enough satellites to get accurate position data. So if we stop it right here, we can see that we're just starting to get it. So GGA, this lines up with this right here, GGA. So we can use that to, to decode our string. So if we look at the first thing, it tells you what time the measurement was made. Then it's gonna give you latitude and longitude. So if we go back here, we see we have our latitude and we have our longitude, okay? Then it tells us our fixed quality. Well, we, we're just trying to get GPS, so we have that. That's where that one comes in. And then how many number of satellites are being tracked? How many do we connect to? And that's right here, and that's four. And then you have other stuff like horizontal dilution of position. I don't actually know what that means. We have altitude. I'm in Colorado, which is definitely above sea level. So not surprisingly, we're about 1,500 meters above sea level. And so this, and then they have a checksum at the end to make sure the data is correct. Now, I will mention some of these give different data. You can see this. And for instance, the one we looked at earlier, the RMC one gives date and time, which the GGA one did not give. Let's see if I let it scroll a little bit longer, if it connects, if it connected to any other satellites. So if you remember, we are connected to four. Let's see, now we're connected to seven. And now we're actually up to fixed quality two, D GPS. So we can see that as we leave this running, we connect to more and more satellites. Okay, that's it for part two. If you want to access the Eagle files, go to GitHub. I'll have the link in the video description. If you have any comments, questions, or add, use the comment section below the video. Like I mentioned before, please help me get up to 10,000 subscribers. And thank you for watching.